Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Crit House. You were just watching a project by Richard Provencio, a book project that we're going to talk about today, because here on The Crit House this week, we are talking about books. And Richard Provencio is here to talk about his book, OBAF. <laughs> Our guest reviewers today are Melissa Ferris, who is a designer and a photo editor. She's been making books for over 20 years. She's currently employed at Union Square as the creative director. It's a New York City publishing house. Before she was at Union Square, she was the creative director at National Geographic. And she, uh, she has been a musician in the past, and she is the author of a book herself, which is also published by National Geographic called uh, Deadly Instinct. Dan Milder is here as well. He is the creative evangelist for Blur Books, and uh, he is also a former photographer and journalist, and he is uh, a, a fellow YouTuber. I get to call myself a YouTuber now. I'm a I little, know. Tiny, little tiny baby YouTuber. But uh, so the reason Dan is, is here is because as a person who published a book, um, I spent a lot of time watching Dan talk about what it takes to make a book and how you make a book and what it means. And, uh, and Dan, uh, you, the education you gave to me was, uh, was incredibly important. And so thank you for, uh, for joining us here and helping us with the Crit House on our book review. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So uh, Richard uh, Provencio is a documentary and street photographer and an artist working in the San Diego area. And he is working on a draft of his book, OBAF. So Richard, if you can tell us a little bit about your book, and then Melissa and Dan will try to help you out and make it sing. Sure. Uh, so uh, I lived in San Diego pretty much my whole life. Uh, I spent a few years away uh, after high school. I was in the army, but uh, for the rest of my life, San Diego. Um, and I'd only been to this specific neighborhood in San Diego, known as Ocean Beach, commonly referred to as OB, um, a handful of times. And uh, the way that I had kind of found out about the neighborhood, I was doing stand-up comedy at the time. Uh, and so I would do shows at like a local dive bar. Uh, where, you know, a bunch of, you know, small bands would play, we'd play, do comedy there. And from there, a lot of the comedians that have worked the sh that room in, in that area, they kind of pinned down OB as a place where there's a lot of hippies and dream catchers and uh, crystals. And that's kind of it, the crux of it. Um, and about a year ago, my girlfriend moved down here. So I started spending a lot of time down here and uh, I recently moved in and am now a local. Uh, but I just found out that it was so much more than the stereotypes, typical crystals and dream catchers, hippies. Uh, it's, it's an area where there's lots of tourists. There's also lots of local tourists where you know, people come from other parts of San Diego to come watch the sunset here at a famous uh, national park, not national park, but that is something. It's called uh, Sunset Clips. It's a super popular area and people will bring nice cars and crews on that. So um, just spending time here, I was like, man, there's so much here that I was not even aware of as a San Diego local. And so I wanted to try and capture that in images. Um, and that's kind of, I think, the, the good intro of the book. For, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So, <laughs> okay. um, so uh, Melissa and Dan, you've, you've uh, had a look at this hopefully before, and mm -hmm. um, we're going through the images now. Uh, Melissa, let's start with you. What do you, what's your, what's your initial I, thought? Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, I think I really love the way that there is um, a narrative thread that comes through um, the the captions that it, it draws you from image to image um and i think it's i think it's really fun but the captions are so large that i was immediately distracted and not focusing on the images um and i really want to focus on the images um in a in a book like this you know i think um it's funny because in the last book we uh we were telling the photographer not to do so many pairings but i think your pairings are actually um, really reflective of the place 
And again, because of the way that you're drawing us through with your, your narrative captions, um, because there's sort of a continuation um, of a thought, I think it, uh, I think the pairings are, are really fun and they actually, um, they actually bring a lot to the, to the project. Um, I, I would, I would probably not include things like that's what she said, but I, you know, I have been in <laughs> a fairly strict publishing environment for a long time. And there's a, there's a lot of personality in what you have in here. And um, I think it's always good to be mindful of what, um, in the same way that I think the scale of the captions uh, sort of distracts from the images, things like that might distract from the project overall, because I think you're really um, telling a great story here about a place and you're really giving a, a fairly complete picture of it, I think, in a, like not, you know, picture, whatever, but I think you're, you're giving a really great overview. And um, I think, like in in some ways there's some stuff that I think some editing you could tighten up some of the images and probably some, sure. of, the, some of the captions as well but I think it's really cool Dan Milner I, yeah I I very much agree with uh what Melissa said I think the captions to me were a bit of a distraction I would probably reword some of those and I'm not sure that the um you know the sort of humorous aspect to all of them is, would be something that I would do but there's something else too that um the cover and the and the back cover which to me didn't because the title and can I say the f word on this or could I just use should I just use I f I don't know you're a youtuber what do you go use okay, I'll, I'll <laughs> just, I'll, we'll make I'll it a family say, show I'll just say f so o b a f to me speaks to that socal small beach town attitude that is really specific and it's and it's historically and world renowned for territorialism and people get protective and there's an attitude and a spunkiness and a you know like I made a joke one time to a surfer I know who's from San Clemente and I called it San Clamoldi as a joke and he just <laughs> I thought he was gonna like he was really <laughs> offended and, and mad at me for a long time so the title and the two images on the cover and the back cover to me don't reflect that feeling and attitude. And you had an image in there um, in the book where there's guys on the on the balconies like throwing gang signs and stuff. And that to me is a picture where I'm like, that reflects the attitude of OBAF, but not necessarily the images you have on the front and back cover. I also think, and Melissa said this very eloquently earlier that um, just because you're putting a book together on your own doesn't mean that you have to do everything on your own. So I think when you give this work to someone who has design chops, what they do with the design and the typography in particular is going to be dramatically improved. And I think that that would be really interesting. But I also agree with Melissa that your pairings are good. And I do like these photo essays that detail a specific place at a specific time because as we all know most of these places in socal in particular the gentrification is happening really rapidly so ob isn't what what it was 15 years ago and it won't be that what it is today 10 years from now so i like it let's time capsule i see those two images in particular the ones you just went by when i when i think of ocean beach and pb as well i think that right there you know, it was a blast to hang out there. You never knew what you were going to see. It was basically like Venice South in some ways. Yeah. And I would love to see more of that harnessed with the copy and um, the design. And the cover, I think. I actually, I, I love I love the cover if it were um, purely a book about, I think about surfing because I like the little people and stuff like that, but it's not. It's a book about a neighborhood. And so we're really pulled back from it. I get that you have a beautiful amount of space on this for you know your type and that, that's real hard to walk away from. Um, I would also just be mindful. Um, you can have you can run into issues putting people identifiable people on covers of um, products. So you're not really allowed to use someone's likeness to promote or sell a product that they're not associated with unless you have a release. So if you know some of these people and you can get permission from them to put them on the cover, I think having a person um, or a neighborhood shot on the cover would be really um, fabulous, but you, you do generally need permission for that kind of shit. Sorry, stuff. Wow. Wow. I, you know, I, I just thought it. I just thought of something else. Um, 
you mentioned something earlier that you did stand up comedy. Right. And which to me tells me that you are fearless. And I think one of the interesting things about doing a project like this is you're constantly photographing people that you don't know. And that's very, very, very intimidating for a lot of photographers. You clearly don't have a problem doing that. One of the things that I find interesting, again, going back to sort of the the pride and the territorialism of small SoCal communities is that oftentimes when you ask people how they feel about living in OB or visiting somewhere, you get real magic from people as to as to their their verbal reflections of what that means. And I think because you do comedy, you probably would have no no problem saying, look, you know, I'd love to photograph you. But can I also ask you what what does OB mean to you or like what does it feel like to be here? I think that might be an interesting thing, maybe even to pepper into the story or to lead in something in the front of the book. If you get some quote that's absolute gold about OB in particular, it could be really fun. Let me ask you something. So we, we've we been looking at the images of this book throughout this whole conversation. And so far, we, we haven't even gotten all the way through. This is a, there are a lot of images here. Um, it does, does it call for an edit? Is it, or, or, or do all of these work? I mean, is this one of those circumstances where all of the images are great and it's uh, the, the length is good or uh, do we need to be looking at them and thinking these were, some of these don't work as well as others? I think you have some either ors in here as, yeah. as we like to call it. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's, you know there's, there's some images that I think um, are gonna command space and, and some that, you know, can probably, you can look at together and say, okay, these images are fairly similar. They have a similar, you know, focal distance. They have a similar coloration. They have similar content. Which one of these do I want to put in the book um, and pare it down to, you know, pull out a, a few signatures or, you know, one or two signatures out of the whole thing um, overall and take it down to, you know, like a, a solid hundred pages or so. I'm, I'm going to use a, a San Diego quote reference, which is from Lester Bangs, who said, these people are not your friends. You make your reputation with honesty and being unmerciful. And I think, you know, I came from the journalism world. So editing was horrible and merciless and awful. And you never got anything more than the one or two, two frames. And so I, I definitely would, would call this, I think there are, to Melissa's point, I think there's either ors that you could go through and really tight, tighten it up. Um, and it would just make it a lot stronger. But that's also something that uh, that having someone with an objective eye can help with sometimes, because because it's hard to do yourself. Sometimes you're too close to it, and and having somebody come in and say, eh, you know, just this one out, this one in, and making maybe not making those decisions, but uh, you know, being honest about what what works and what doesn't. Yes, I think. Um you know, uh, having a, somebody who edits for a living have a look at it is always um, can be, you know, uh, harsh and painful. But at the same time, I don't think I've ever gone through that process and come out with something that I thought was worse than the edit that I had made. It's always been better. And I think I was fortunate. I'm 53. I came up in a time when I was working with an editor every single day. And I did at the time, I didn't realize how advantageous that was until it all went away. And so, yeah, Richard, I think it would be really fun to sit with an editor and, and have them uh, dissect this for you. It could be, would be really nice. Cause I, I just think it needs a little tightening, but I do like the feel yeah. and the attitude of the whole piece. So, so let me, let me ask this of our esteemed experts. So all of these images are, have the same, the same layout. It's sort of uh, uh, every page is the same. Does that, does that work in this case? Or does there need to be more space on some pages, or and uh, and maybe a different size? And I'm only I'm not I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just asking. I mean, I'm not I'm not super bothered by the paired aspect on this project. I, I uh, there's something about it that you know just just kind of works i just think there's there's some um there's some images all right so stop here flip back to the previous page um 
So this picture on the on the right and the picture on the left of the next spread to me, um, you only need one of those. Uh, you don't you don't particularly need both. And so just things like that, and it doesn't necessarily mean you have to you know destroy all your pairings or anything, but you just might want to take out the images that are sort of overly similar. I, I, don't, I don't know what you think, Dan, but I, I actually, I'm kind of into the pairs because I feel like it, it, it gives me more of a sense of a neighborhood and a community that they're together somehow. Um, and it's not as, you know, precious a treatment. Yeah, I think um, to your point, like the two seascapes, I think in the seascape region in particular, there are pictures that I would call. I think there's a specific middle distance, yeah. middle spacing style of images, image that Richard, you shoot uh, well, but but there's there's quite a few of them in there. And I think sure. I would call, call through that. But there's also a, another thing, and this is just because I'm greedy. This is what <laughs> I, I personally want to see, is if you go back a couple of spreads and you had the you had the seashore on the left and then you had the guy on the right this guy on the right who's throwing like the he's doing a thumbs up or something me i want i want because of your comedy your comedy chops and your fearlessness i want to be on top of that guy i want to see tight something that's because a lot of this is middle distance and middle space what i would call middle spacing foreground midground background but quite a distance between those three and i'd love to see some little bit tighter closer um you know a face or this guy to me when i think of ob i think of people exactly like that and i would yeah. love to just see I, I see that picture and i just want to walk up and get a close-up of who that guy actually is so my, that's me like standing behind you in the field just pushing you uh forward sure so dan so dan are you saying then that, that uh that this book isn't ready that he needs to put create more imagery or is that just something that uh I mean, he just no, I think you could cut you could cut a book from this. Mm -hmm. But I'm again, I'm greedy. I want I know what's out there. And I would love to see there's things that I would love to see that I don't quite see in here that you maybe have in your your outtakes or your edits. Yeah. Um, sure. Because I'm greedy. I want more like if you go back one, go back go one on. spread. And I'm this is me as a photographer. And again, it's just one perspective. But like that image on the right, look at that woman on the left is foreground two on the right with the dog mid ground four surfers background but i want to be 20 feet further ahead and and sort of down to the left that to me there's a there's a pictures within a lot of these pictures and i kind of feel like there's you know 20 feet further ahead and you, that work ratchets up a, a degree and so yes there's a book here but me being the jerk i'm like i want more Sure. I do think that there's a lot to say in terms of pacing a book out to um, uh, to have tighter shots and and more pulled back shots. There there is a lot of middle distance in here, um, and I think when you start to get yeah to, into some of the interiors, you you, you get there a little bit. Um, but um, okay, on this page, if they tell you not to photograph in there. <laughs> Don't photograph her, <laughs> or don't get her into trouble if she works there. That's my my one comment. I was I was very struck by that, and I was like, is she is, is this lady going to get fired now? Um, <laughs> once this Fair is enough. But um, yeah. you know, like if if there's a restriction policy, respect it. But I do love that picture, and I love that we we have um, the juxtaposition of the more pulled back um, record store, and then a tighter shot on her, and we really get to see her beautiful face, and I, I think it's, I think it's really cool, um, I, but I do think in terms of pacing this book out, um, I, I, like Dan says, I don't know if it's a matter of pulling out so that you get more of that interplay in terms of your focal distance, or if it's just at going through what you haven't included, because I assume this is an edit, and bringing in more shots like the one on the left here, you know, where you you really, you get someone foregrounded, you get a, a portrait. Um, th the other thing I'll say, just from a, a, a personal uh perspective of having been assigned assignments to do projects on neighborhoods like this. The first time I ever came to California was an assignment to do exactly the same thing. And I ended up part of it was in OB. This is not easy but to me. I mean, if, if I assigned 
the assignment was, Richard, you're going to photograph the guy on the balcony throwing the gang sign with the black hat on and the dreadlocks, and you have three months to follow that guy around. That story has borders and parameters on it. And again, um, the first project that we looked at tonight was also on a, on a specific uh, city within a city. And so an illustration of where OB sits, like to, at least with OB, you know the borders of where that city lies, which is one thing to your advantage. But I find this style of project is very, very difficult. And I think that you've done well um, because it's, man, it's just so hard because you've got so much content and so many angles to work and it takes a long time to get it. So I think you should feel good about what you have. And I think you can always keep working in the fact that you're there is fantastic. I think finding a project that you have constant access to is is how you get better as a photographer and a bookmaker. Richard, so you've uh, you. you've listened to all this. <laughs> what, what's your thoughts? I mean, what's where are you going to go with this now after hearing what uh, what uh, what they've told you? Um, I mean, every every uh, thank you for all the feedback. It's super helpful and uh, especially for the nice things. Um, <laughs> no, uh, no, I, I think. It, you both offered very valuable insight and uh, I don't disagree with any of it. Um, I, I know personally that like a lot of it can be tightened up. Um, and I, I kind of consciously made a choice, right? Like I don't, I don't particularly want to be uh, like Matt Stewart or one of these photographers that I guess are more artsy and, like you, someone used the word precious earlier, where, you know, maybe a, a monograph from one of them might be 70 pages or something, but there are just all bangers and no, no captions, whatever. Um, I've, I've consciously made an effort to start trying to combine my comedy background with my photography background. And I think that this is like a a vehicle for that so i'm trying to test the waters in there but uh i definitely agree with like the font and design like fixing fixing the design aspects like sending this to a graphic designer to help me with that um yeah that would be awesome and 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 even the captions i i totally agree that i can tighten some of those up uh although i don't know that i'm going to take out that's what she said <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but but yeah no i i think you guys both offered very valid uh critique and and i'm super appreciative for it and to and to be able to watch this again and you know take notes and actually get in and do some tweaking um will be very helpful so again i'm just very uh gracious of your guys's time and and feedback well it's a it's, a, it's a pleasure to look at the work and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with after we talk about this and i hope you'll uh, you'll you'll give us a chance to to, to uh, have a conversation once you get it published and uh, and have a look at it um as we as we wrap things up dan and melissa do you have any just last thoughts that are uh, going back and forth in your head that you think that uh, that richard should know about page 106 for the cover wait what is it page page 106 i'd try it as the cover Page 106. Let's go look at that. Hang on a second. Let me try to find it here. Guy driving his car. Oh, I'm way down here. <laughs> oh, I know which one you're talking. Yep. Yeah. Totally. I don't know where you're putting the type. One before this stuff. One before this. Yeah. I just I don't oh. know. So like you get a you get a good sense of the neighborhood. You get somebody, you get, yeah, I don't know. I would try that one. There's a Thank few other you. ones too, but I, I like that one. Well, to so but to Hell so yeah. to your to your point, uh, if he's on the cover, yeah, does, he, you know. does he need to get his permission? And does he? Yeah, have to, probably. Does he but you know that car, you're gonna you're gonna spot that car. <laughs> That's true. I, I've seen him often. <laughs> Dan, last thoughts for you, sir. Yeah, it's just an overall feel from the project. Um, like I said, the first time I ever went to, well, I'm sorry, the second time, the first time was a Northridge earthquake that I got sent to California. But the, the first real time that I got to spend time in California, I was sent to do a project about um, snowbirds from another state that go to California uh, in the summer. And so it was from San Diego to LA. And <laughs> there was a specific feel that I had never felt before coming from the Midwest and Wyoming, where I grew up as a kid. 
And so this reminds me of that first time that I drove up to the cliff in, um, I forget where it was, Solana Beach or something. And I looked out at the Pacific and I was like, holy cow. And there was a very unique feel to those small SoCal beach towns. Newport doesn't have it. Corona Del Mar doesn't have it. But, but places like OB and PB are so different. And this really makes me remember that scene. And I think that's the point of the project is to... For people who haven't seen it, they may feel it for the first time. And what you've made me do is reconnect with that feeling. And um, that's a good thing. Well, yeah, right I think uh, it is, Richard. You know, I tell you what, that you've, you've, you've moved some people and you made them feel something. So uh, you, you've, got, you've got something here. So I'll take congratulations that. on that. We're looking, <laughs> yes. we're looking for more. Um, thank you. Thank you all for uh, for being here and helping us out. Melissa, your input has been great, and Dan, uh, and uh, I'm honored to have you join us here on the Crit House. And, and Dan, um, uh, even even uh, uh, even having you uh, in a conversation after all of the assistance you've given me through uh, the last couple of years when I've been working on my projects, thank you for that too. Um, I am going to be linking out real quickly to a video here that I found to be uh, helpful. There's a woman named Elizabeth Abaddon who is, yes, related to that Abaddon. Um, who is a book publisher as well, and she does some great work, and uh, that we'll have a, a view of one of her Leica conversations with Elizabeth Abaddon, um, and I encourage you all to take a look at that and see her work as well. Thank you for all watching The Crit House.